In today's show, Apple Silicon Mac Pro will be boring, Apple Fitness adds new features, and Apple Reality will reveal before WWDC, plus your iCave answers. I'm iCave Dave, and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you, and if you want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell. And if you use hashtag notification squad, when you turn off the notifications down in the comments, you'll get a shout out in the next show. Last week we talked about the Mac Pro and yesterday Mark Gurman said, nah, it's going to look like the last one. So Apple is expected to release a new Mac Pro this year and not only will it be not interesting to look at or innovative, but despite being probably eight times the size of a Mac Studio, it won't have a faster chip, topping out apparently with the ultra level chips or dual linked Maxes in effect, but it will also not allow you to add more memory as the memory will be unified as expected and a part of the board with the existing Apple Silicon product lineup chips. As expected, you will be able to add networking cards and audio interfaces over PCIe, but this is likely to be the least upgradable Mac Pro after the purchase Apple has ever released. And let's just hope and pray that the price point reflects that, although I wouldn't hold my breath. For me personally, I still expect Apple might allow dual ultra chips, but that doesn't line up with the information that we're seeing so far. My thought is that it's actually just making the huge single chip that is the issue without so many flaws that they have to bin the majority of them. If you simply put a pair of ultra chips in there, you're probably not gonna get quite as much bandwidth through them, but you're actually gonna get two working chips, and that might be enough. Let me know your thoughts on the Mac Pro down in the comments section. Apple Fitness Plus is getting some big updates as of today, uh, adding three new trainers, kickboxing workouts, sleep meditations, and a Beyonce artist spotlight. How can I resist? First, the three new trainers, Nez Dali is gonna be leading Kickboxing, Brian Cochran for high impact interval training and Jen Law for strength workouts. Kickboxing is going to join the lineup for Fitness Plus with cardio focused workouts for the whole body in 10, 20 or 30 minute lengths and I'll be doing those later today. Sleep meditations are 20 minutes in length and can be used to wind down as part of your bedtime routine or just as you drift off. Apple has also added two new collections, six weeks to restart your fitness and level up your core training and honestly I didn't even know that collections were a thing before so this is going to help me personally massively. Next up, Apple Reality currently going to be released to the general public in a special event before WWC in early June, with its sales release around the end of 2023. Now, it seems very strange to hold an event as late as May, perhaps simply launching at WWDC alongside resources for devs would make more sense to me, although WWDC can be pretty dense information-wise, so to hit regular consumers, maybe this is the right play. Now this could come as more of a kind of standard press release and not so much a full on Apple event, but I feel like Apple wants to make a big buzz about this, so I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe they're gonna announce it during the spring, release some developer stuff and then give more detail at WWDC so that people can refine it. I don't know, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Now Apple Reality is expected to consist of multiple displays with external cameras for AR integration and potentially a waistband mounted battery pack. The point of that being to reduce the weight on your head. Smart. But are you excited for Apple Reality? That is the big question. Kind of feel like still something that the general public don't care about but I could be completely wrong. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and getting to your iCave answers, which you can ask in the comments. As it's asked, so iCave answers a lot of tech news thought that the iPhone 14 Plus would sell well, doesn't seem to have sold well. Do you think there's no room for a mini or plus sized iPhone? Or was it priced incorrectly? Was Steve Jobs right to limit the choice on the model range? And what could Apple do differently? And this is a great question. I personally think that, I think the iPhone needs to be the iPhone. I think they need to have one phone that is the base iPhone. And then if you want to do variants on it, they should all be a premium. So in the same way that we have an iPad and then the iPad mini is more expensive and more premium, uh, I think maybe we should do a mini pro. Uh, so it's like the pocket pro or something like that. I'm not that sure. I think the, the big issue here is that we went $799, $899 for the regular iPhones and then $999, $1099 for the Pro iPhones, whereas the Pros got huge amounts of new uh, features uh, and the regular iPhones almost got nothing. They got car crash detection and SOS via satellite. Two things that basically are not going to affect your day-to-day -day life. So I think the, the issue is that there was nothing that would genuinely improve the experience for most people. There were a couple of 
nice add-ons but not something that you would buy the phone for unless you happen to be an adventurer in which case you can go up to the pro ones i really think that the sos via satellite is something that could have been a pro feature i don't think putting safety as a pro feature is also something that apple wants to do it's a very confusing setup um i just think that this year's regular iphones the iphone and the iphone uh, plus were just not particularly compelling products compared to last year's devices. Next, Tony Ward asks, IK Vances, it's reported that Tim Cook is stepping down as CEO of Apple after the next big announcement. He's certainly growing Apple's profitability and share price. I suspect this has been at the expense of innovation, creativity, and product excellence. We certainly have more iPhones, iPads, and Macs to choose from, but they are all evolutions of Steve Jobs' concept. What is truly new? Who do you think should lead Apple going forward? Now, controversially, I would probably argue with you that Tim hasn't sort of contributed anything creatively. That's also not his job. His job is to run the company, not create the products. Steve was an exception, an outlier, because he was so involved in the way that Apple created their products. And I don't think that is something you should expect from a CEO. He has a team behind him and their job is to create great products for Apple's audience to buy. I would also say things like the Apple Watch, Steve never had any hands on at all. That was completely new for uh, Tim Cook's Apple. And I think the Apple Watch has been a huge success. Uh, I would say that the way that the Macs have gone and the reason that the Macs are successful now is because of the way that Tim has managed uh, not only supply chain, but also Apple Silicon's development as it's gone on and the fact that he has recognized that this is the way forwards beyond what Intel were able to offer. So I think without Tim Cook, we don't get Apple Silicon. We certainly don't get the un-Johnny Ived versions of the MacBook Pros. So adding all of those ports back in that everyone was so excited about, that would not have happened under Steve. They would have reduced the amount of ports, the amount of port selection, all that kind of thing. Uh, we wouldn't have got a Mac Studio. We wouldn't have probably got the iMac Pro, but I'm not a, a big fan of the iMac Pro. I know it happened and uh, I think it was very much a stopgap. I think Steve might have pushed a little bit harder on getting the Mac Pros to be that kind of flagship product. That is the big difference I would have seen. In terms of who comes next, I think Jeff Williams is the most likely successor. I don't think we'll see Craig Federici coming in as CEO. However, what I do think is that they might shift focus a little bit and have Craig, instead of a head of software, in, uh, become a head of product and lead those keynotes so that instead of having your CEO coming out and introducing everything. I think Craig with his charisma is much better placed to lead product demonstrations. It doesn't have to be the CEO. They would have to come out and say hi to everyone. But I think Craig would be better at tying everything together. James Apple asks, will we get micro LED on the Apple Watch Ultra by the fall? I asked Rick Ross Young, aka Ross Displayman, and he said it's possible whatever to strange that means. It looks more likely that we'll be getting uh, Ultra Apple Watches with for some reason, even bigger displays next year in 2024. Uh, I don't think they're gonna change it up that, that much this year. It might even be that we don't get a refresh to the Ultra this year. I could see that being an every two years kind of thing. I don't even know what they're gonna do with Apple Watch unless they have a new sensor to put on it. And if they do, then they would need to add that to the Ultras, but they're not really doing much in terms of the uh, the whole thing. I, I don't know. It's, it's not my favorite product line at the minute. I don't think Apple are doing much with it. And although the Ultra has got a bigger display and it's more waterproof and stuff, they've not really added that much for me. Black Greninja asks, I came asked, did you see about the new report about the Apple Watch Ultra 2 getting a bigger screen with a 2.1 inch micro LED panel? When do you think that's likely to come out? I'm already craving it. As I've said in the previous question, 2024, uh, I don't think it's going to be this year. Um, and also, I don't think it makes much difference. It's already too big. James Apple asks, will the new iPad Pros have M3 with OLED displays or will we get that with M4 iPad Pro? Also, the sizes are getting slightly bigger. I don't know if they're going to do the dynamic island and shrink the bezels down to get to 11.1 inches and 13 inches. Okay, so uh, we are hearing about OLED iPads. I think the difference with this is we are gonna get very slightly different panel sizes. And I think that's because the physical size of the pixels has to be slightly different for these uh, OLED displays. Again, don't think they're coming until 2024. It doesn't look like they're gonna be coming this year. Um, but uh, yes, slightly thinner bezels. I don't think we're gonna go with Dynamic Island on it because there is enough bezel there to put a camera in and Face ID and stuff. So uh, yeah, don't think that's gonna happen. 
So thank you for watching, guys. If you've got a question for me, there are a couple more in the bank that are still coming. Don't worry if yours hasn't been answered today. It's on the way. Um, but thank you to the Patreons, and we'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell.